I used to uh, get hip hop weeklies in jail. That's crazy. That's where you find all the juice at. <laughs> I used to. I hate bougie rappers. You know what I'm saying? I think uh, people get bougie before it's time to get bougie. You know what I'm saying? Of course, the elite, elite rappers that's like past going to clubs and stuff like that. Yeah, you could be bougie, but if you're in a club and, 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 and it's a fan right there, take a picture, say hi. Ah. So you ask yourself, do I want love or do I want loyalty? Do I want somebody that's going to be with me right or wrong? going to be like, nah, I can't do that to him because I'm loyal to him. Or, nah, I can't do that to him. Because I'm hey, you already know it's your boy Cassie Nova and you watching Hip Hop Weekly. I see that you in Atlanta and I saw some videos of you kind of like partying and stuff with Trey Song. So it seemed like Atlanta yeah. treated you kind of good. Yeah, yeah, Atlanta's dope. I love Atlanta. Okay. So... Um, what was it like partying with Trey? How was the party? I saw Obi kind of welcomed you in and had y'all lit in the club in a section. And I, I always party with Trey. It's just, I'm a party, I'm a turn up type of guy. So when I get in the city, I want to go to the club, turn up. Okay. So That's would you consider you yourself like a party boy or? Yeah, I'm definitely a party guy. Yeah. Yeah, but a lot of the videos, I see that you really interact with your fans when you're at parties and stuff, dance with them or getting dubs and whatnot. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of funny to see you interact with your fans like that. So talk to me a little bit about that. Um, no, I just, I just, um, I just like to stay the same. That's what I would have did before uh, rap. So I tend to um, don't act bougie. I used to. I hate bougie rappers. You know what I'm saying? I think uh, people get bougie before it's time to get bougie. You know what I'm saying? Of course, the elite, elite rappers. That's like past going to clubs and stuff like that. Yeah, you could be bougie, but if you're in a club and, 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 and it's a fan right there, take a picture, say hi, ah, you know, dance, make their day. Yeah, I think yeah. it's definitely important for, you know, artists to show love to their supporters and their fans and things like that. So I think it's really good that you interact with them and dub with them in a party or whatever mm -hmm. it is, turn up. Um, so talk to me about, a, you know, how you establish yourself. I mean, you're an established artist now, mm -hmm. so congratulations on that. But Thank you. Um, talk to me a little bit about the process. I feel like a lot of people don't understand what it really takes to get to where someone like a Casanova is, like yourself. Mm. The process is hard. Um, I think I got the cheat code before, before rap because um, I, I got to be around rappers for like a year straight. You know, going out with them, going to the studio and stuff like that. So I got to, I got to see beforehand like the headaches, the um, the fakeness. You know what I'm saying in the industry, and um, I just was just soaking up, soaking everything up. So I kind of got the uh, good end of the stick because I was around rappers earlier than before I was rapping. So now once I uh, became a rapper, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. Uh, one thing that I, 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 I always keep in mind is uh, don't believe nobody. You know what I'm saying? Don't. That's where rappers, I guess, tend to um, get mad at other rappers for. Because everybody just tell you what you want to hear at that point in, in moment, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got you. I'll give you a feature. Yeah, I got you. I got that beat for you. Yeah, come, come. Let's go to the club. Mm -hmm. You call them, they don't pick back up, but they just set it right in front of your face. So um, I, 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 I learned early, you know what I'm saying? And uh, one thing I noticed also about being around rappers is some of them are lazy, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So as long as you put the work in, your music ain't got to go platinum every time. You just got to put that platinum work in and it's gonna it's gonna pay the bills yeah so i mean you said you noticed a lot of things um about the industry that for most people would probably discourage them or deter them so how did you like look past that was it your passion that kept you going like what made you decide like you know what forget all that i'm still gonna go for this like i need to be a rapper um, um, jail okay you know what i'm saying i it's easy it's either rap or jail it's like it's no in between it's like uh anything other than rap would be me uh missing another kid's birthday or something like that. Yeah. So I just I just put that in my head like I'm doing it for my kids, my freedom. 
and stuff like that because uh who wants who wants to be there? So right. I use that to trigger me going hard, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And would you say that that type of motivation is what keeps you grounded? Definitely. Okay. Definitely. Because especially when you don't really got nothing to live for, it it just it just it's just so easy to put that pain in or to do bad. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to do good. It's hard to let somebody step on your shoes and, and be like, don't worry about it. You're okay. You know, and he's he's looking like uh, you did something wrong to him. You know what I'm saying? It's hard, but you live with it. You learn with it. I just, I just think it comes with experience. So, yeah. yeah. And it seems like you definitely have that experience. I mean... You know, just watching how you move, I feel like there's a lot of situations that could have turned on negative, but you took the high road, so that's that's good. That's big. Yeah, thank you. Um, I mean, is the industry what you expected it to be? You know, considering everything we just talked about. Um, nah, it's not what you expected it to be, but you could make it what you wanted. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I, it's just, like I said, you just gotta stick and move. You know what I'm saying? Don't get too cool with certain people, cause it's, it's about money. Everybody trying to make money. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if you're not hot, <laughs> nobody don't want to deal with you. Right. So you just got to keep yourself hot. If you like the love, you like the lights coming on, you like the uh, TMZ following you, you just got to stay relevant. All right. So you talk a lot about, like, some of the things that you've been through in other interviews, just like being locked up or... And I feel like, you know, some people might look at that negative, but I feel like it makes you a role model. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about, you know, um, what that experience was like for you and maybe how it changed you. Um, the experience, Joe, was, it, at first it was cool, you know what I'm saying, when, you, when you're young. Again, you ain't got nothing to live for. It was cool. Then when you start uh, losing friends and uh, losing family members and, People start giving up on you. That's when it. That's when it comes. It, it becomes uh scary and traumatizing and boring. And you know you get over that that hump. Like you know what, this ain't for me no more. Um, I had to learn the hard way, and I'm lucky I went through that. You know what I'm saying? Because it made me who I am today. Okay, so the school of hard knocks. Yeah, school of hard knocks. Um, I kind of feel like a lot of. I mean, yeah, there's some people that just do things that maybe you don't make the right decision. But mm -hmm. what about the people who are there as a result of the system? Like a lot of things are going on with our politics right now that. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, Jaden, Jaden Smith, he said something. He said uh, schools set you up for jail. And it was crazy he said that because I started Going back, thinking of the bells that ring in school are the same bells that ring in jail. Wow. Um, recreation, time, is the same thing they have in jail, on the rack in your school. Rack time, you know what I'm saying? Um, on the child, same thing. Lunch, you get in line, you take your plate, somebody throws something on there. And same thing in jail. Uh, you get in trouble, you get suspended, or you go to detention room. Same thing in jail. You get in trouble in jail, you go to the hole or uh, isolation. And it was crazy. I'm like, everything is just like jail. School is like jail. They even look like schools in yeah. jail. You know, they got college campuses that look like look like a jail to me. But um, that's how it is. But uh. Yeah, I think they they kind of set us up for failure, you know, and it's hard, but we all got to live and we learn, you know, like, that's why I don't go speaking to kids, because I didn't want to hear it when I was young, mm -hmm. and they're not going to want to hear it. They got, you got to feel it. You got to go through it. You got to lose some to understand you ain't trying to lose more, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, just kind of, I mean, I don't know you personally, but just kind of seeing what you post on social media, what you share. You're a father, so you're a role model in different ways. So what are some of the things you probably tell kids that, you know, you don't want to end up in a situation like you ended up in? I don't, I ain't gonna lie. I don't really tell kids nothing. Like I told you, I feel like anything you say wouldn't, wouldn't get done. Like Nobody, like, we all disobeyed our parents and disobeyed however, you know what I'm saying, the law, me. 
Um, I feel like all you could do is just let somebody learn. Like, you got to, like, yo, I'm telling you. When, when it's, it's more like you're not trying to school them or lecture them. You just tell them, like, yo, yeah, you know you get caught with that. That's like uh, four yeah. years. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, two grams of that can equal up to, like, if you're going to do something, just know what you're doing. Here, check this out. Check the uh, the guidelines. Maybe, ah, this, this ain't for me. I didn't know you get all of this time for this. You know what I'm saying? I think you just... Like even me with my daughter, I just give it to her like, like she grown already, and she only ten. I just give it to her like she grown. Yeah. What's the most rewarding thing for you about being a dad? Um. Uh, the most rewarding thing is being able to uh take my kids to the workplace, like, okay. like being able to uh take my daughter to the studio. Like I was at uh, her graduation the other day. And she was so happy I was there, and she was just showing off. Yeah, that's my dad. That's Casanova. And, they, and her friends like, you lying. And I'm just happy for her, but she's happy that I'm here. And um, that's rewarding, you know, missing it. Sometimes you, when you miss it, you don't even understand it. It's confusing because um, my daughter was born while I was in jail. So mm-hmm. you don't even understand missing a daughter because you never was there in the first place. It's kind of crazy, but um, I didn't even know how to miss a daughter. When I came home, it was just like, yeah, this is my daughter. It's, it's cool. But then once you get attached, you start missing things. Like, uh, I should just bring her to my house today. Uh, you know, she she waking me up, shaking me. Dad, get up, take me to school, or some some things of that nature. You get to understand the process and that's that's what I'm going through now like I understand the process I'm like dang I want more for her I want better for her okay. you know matter of fact I need to get a house instead of living downtown Brooklyn maybe I should move to Westchester or somewhere nice to raise my kids you start doing it for the kids but you you, you, you gotta have that connection and I, now I'm just getting that connection yeah. it sounds like she made you a better man yeah definitely <laughs> Um, so let's talk about love for a minute, right? You're talking about your daughter, but you're very, very public with your relationship with mm-hmm. Jazzy. Mm-hmm. So um, I find it, I mean, I think it's really great. I feel like a lot of men nowadays um, don't really have positive relationship role models to look mm-hmm. to. There's a lot of scandalous things going on. So talk to me. Like, how do you define love? What is love? Um, I really don't believe in in, in, in love. Like, okay. Um. I don't want to call it love. I just like, I like dealing with loyalty. You know, loyalty to me is, is everything. Cause you look at it. Um, a lot of people can love you, but they don't have to be loyal to you. Mm. So you ask yourself, do I want love or do I want loyalty? Do I want somebody that's going to be with me right or wrong? It's going to be like, nah, I can't do that to him because I'm loyal to him. Oh, uh, no, nah, I can't do that to him because I love him. The love thing don't really sit right with me. I think it's just more loyalty over anything. It's just like, you know what it is. We friends. We cool. We love us. You know, you're my girl. And we're just going to be loyal to each other rather than, oh, I love you. I love you too. It just don't sit well with me. Okay. Hope that don't go over your head. Yeah, Ain't that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> So um, talk to me a little bit about some of the tours that you've been on. Um, I know one of the big tours you did, you did with Breezy. Yeah. Um, was that one of the first tours you did or yeah. have you toured before? That was, that, was, that was the first big tour. I did a little three-day stuff. Okay. And, but that was amazing. That was one of the best experiences of my life. Like, whew. <laughs> it, was a, it was a lot. I loved okay. it, especially the arena. Like, it's a different type of feel, like, the floor shaking. You really can't hear nothing going on. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's a different type of feel. It's a whole lot of different energy. Yeah. yeah. So, um, being on tour, what were some of the things that you learned, or how did how did you even get on the tour? Um, Chris Brown told me like, "Yo, I want you to come," and I I didn't believe him. I, again, I just I just be like, "Yeah, whatever," until. He announced it on Instagram. He was like, yeah, I'm having a tour. And I'm like, and Casanova, get ready. You coming too. I was like, oh, shit. What? Yo, 
give somebody give me the repost app. Like, give me. I'm reposting this now. He can't take back this. Right. He might have made a mistake. I got to repost this now. And um, I posted it, and he was like, nah, you could come. I said, oh, it's lit. I had my own room. Okay. Well, it, was, it was definitely different. Definitely. So you're on tour. You step out on stage. You're in an arena full of people. Arena. And you hear your song, the instrumental start to play right before you start rapping. What's uh, going on in your head? Kill. Okay. Kill. Like, don't leave no crumbs. It just, <laughs> I, I, every time it was, it was like we was competing. Friendly Fire. Um, me, Fabulous, OT Genesis, Cap G. We was like, yo, yo, you better move on that stage. Like, yo, that stage is so big. That's the biggest stage I've ever been on in my life. It, it had four corners, then two ledges, and four outer corners of the corners. So that was just like a, a football field. And I just had to run everywhere, run around, do this, do this. And we was really having fun. We was like, yo, you wasn't moving. You wasn't turned up. Like, I was turned up. So we were just leaving it out there, everything. We just leave coming off the stage, like, ah, ah, everything was just getting left out of there. Okay. And what was it like working with Fab? I feel like a lot of people have a lot of negative things to say about New York artists working mm-hmm. together. So how do you feel about that? Like, you know, um, what was it like collaborating with him? And how do you feel about people saying New York people don't work together? Nah, I, I don't think that's true. But uh, we definitely... Uh, we definitely worked together a lot. You know what I'm saying? He cool. He always showed me love from the beginning. Um, I was hanging around him before rap also, and he always motivated me to rap. Like, yo, you should go ahead. You should do it. You know what I'm saying? I did it. Okay. So that's really good. Now, what was your most embarrassing tour moment or, like, the most memorable, mm-hmm. funny tour moment? Because there's a picture that kind of went viral, y'all. I don't know what y'all was talking mm-hmm. about in that picture. <laughs> it's a lot of moments. It's a lot of moments. It's crazy, but uh, I think uh, one time they played the remix to a song, okay, and not the original version. So everybody's looking for Young and May to come out. Oh, and I'm rapping her verse, and <laughs> she never came out, but um. I knew it was a mess up. I just let it rock, and um, that was embarrassing to me. I was so mad. Okay. Yeah, so but you mad. you held it down though. You did her verse, and you. I was so you... mad because like the fans probably didn't know, but like the other people was like, "What the hell was that?" Yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. So I know that you're with Rock Nation. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about you know signing with Rock Nation and what it's like to be a Rock Nation artist. Um, I was with Warehouse Music Group first bleak through rock nation and um then i went with rock nation after my deal was done with bleak um it was great from the start from the start um i just feel like you gotta put your own work in no matter where you at what label you at you gotta fight yourself and then they're gonna fight for you so it was a blessing um uh i grew up on rockefeller so being a part of Rock Nation is definitely a blessing to me, especially coming from where I came from. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Getting a shot is dope. So being around Hove and Memphis Bleak, have you ever gotten any advice from them? Yeah, I definitely did, but I, I can't drop no jewels here. Can't drop no jewels here. Uh-uh. All right, cool. But it was definitely life-changing or something really powerful. Definitely. Okay, okay. So... Let's talk a little bit about your new EP mm-hmm. coming out June 29th, right? June 29th. Okay, Commissary. so the name Commissary. Yeah. Talk to me about the concept. Um, I named it Commissary because in jail, that's that's all you need. Like you just be like, dang, I need some money for Commissary. Commissary coming up. Um, it's like everything that revolves around. An inmate, all he's thinking about is commissary. Like, uh, he calling home. Yo, put some money on my books. I need commissary. Yo, I need some. I'm going to commissary this week. And um, I send people money for for uh, commissary. So it was like, I'm thinking like, you know what? 
I'm gonna name this commissary. You 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 gotta you gotta want this. You know what I'm saying? You got you need this. This is commissary. So um, I went with the name. Everybody like you show up. Like yeah, definitely. And um, I I always go back to jail because I spent most of my time on like as a, a teenager and adult in jail. So I just want to let them know I didn't forget about them. You know what I'm saying? It's really not for the industry. Some of the industry people are never going to get it. But they really motivate me also because you got people with life in jail like cash. Stay out of there. Whether they telling me to stay out of there so I can keep sending them money for commissary is cool. But that still helps. Like You know what I'm saying? When you like, yo, when you come home and it's like 2056, you know, but I'm working on an appeal. I'm trying to get it together. That appeal never never comes. You know what I'm saying? So you be fighting for your life for a long time. So I'm just I'm just um allowing them to live through me, giving them something to relate to. And I did something with uh pay J Pay. Um so my music could be released in two hundred two hundred thousand Joe. Wow. Inmate. Two hundred thousand inmates. Yeah, 200,000 inmates. So definitely they're going to be able to relate to that commissary. Yeah. yeah. And how long were you recording for? How long did it take you to record? Um, I've been been an artist for like two years. Okay. Yeah. And so you recorded the EP quickly? How long did it take you to record the EP? Um, It was it was quick. It wasn't... Um, I just picked different songs that... I really wanted other songs to go in there, but they was like, nah, just say that for the album. Okay. Just just put this out there for now. You know, get get a little piece of work out for cool. now. And I was like, all right, cool. And yeah. so when's the album coming out? Or roughly, when do you think you can come up with an album? Like October. Okay, October. That's, That's not too I'm bad. I'm hoping for. You're hoping for it. Well, you can get it done. You've been through everything, so you yeah. can get that done. That's light work. Definitely. Okay. So tell me a little bit about the two singles that you have. From off the EP, uh, I know there's a best friend 2.0, right? Yeah. And work with Rich the Kid yeah, and G Easy. Yeah. Okay, how uh, did the single come about? Um, you just called them like, "Yo, I need you to get on this." His best friend. We uh, yeah. To- <laughs> um, a lot of people was uh fishing around like, "Yo, you should get somebody on this." I'm like, "All right," and then I just got a call like, "Yo, G Easy gonna get on it." Uh, Rich the Kid too. I'm like, "Oh, that's dope," and then we just made it work. You just made it work. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it seems like a body of work that you're really proud of, and I think it's kind of cool that you tie it back to giving people, you know, that are kind of going through the same thing you're going through. Um, any kind of last comments that you want to leave people with? Fans to know. Tough one. Yeah, I don't know. I think everybody know everything about me. I don't know. I don't know. That's hard. <laughs> It's cool. Right. It's cool. Well, thank you for talking to us at Hip Hop Weekly Magazine. Thank you for having me. I hope that Atlanta treats you good. Mm-hmm. And um, that's it. Thank you. All right, man. This couch is comfortable. You got some comfortable couches. <laughs>